as a part of the discussion of as a part of the discussion of multiple integrals let us learn two special functions one is the beta function another is the gamma function of course from them we also learn about the error function initially let us discuss about the gamma function before we discuss one more point i want to say these beta and gamma functions will be not only special functions that means they are not the conventional functions they will be utilized to evaluate many improper integrals or complicated integrals error function finds utility in the context of statistics so in statistics it has got so much of utility let us now initially learn the definition of the gamma function gamma function is a function of a single argument it is defined as an improper integral the definition is gamma n is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power of n minus 1 dx defined for n greater than 0 then can we know the values of the gamma function for certain values of the argument n initially let us see what is gamma 1 gamma 1 is when you substitute n is equal to 1 integral 0 to infinity e power minus x dx on integration it becomes minus e power minus x to be evaluated at 0 and infinity as x tends to infinity e power minus x tends to 0 at x is equal to 0 the value is 1 therefore the value of this quantity becomes 1 that means gamma 1 is equal to 1 we notice that the exponential function e power minus x is known as a decaying exponential e power x is known as a growing exponential whenever we want to say that something grows or the growth is very high we make use of exponential growth similarly when you want to say that something diminishes very fast we can say it is exponential decay what is the plot of the exponential function you can as well see that in the two dimensional coordinate system e power minus x appears like this for you it tends to zero as x tends to infinity e power x on the other hand it starts asymptotically with x axis it goes to infinity both meet the vertical axis at x is equal to zero at x is equal to zero both the functions have got the value 1 exponential function has got an excellent property it dominates every algebraic function what is the meaning of this in this context we know that limit extending to infinity e power minus x is equal to 0 when we say that the exponential function dominates severe algebraic function the meaning is limit extending to infinity of x e power minus x is also 0 this is really interesting actually when x goes to infinity x into e power minus x is difficult to imagine what will be the limit is it going to approach an indeterminate quantity that is what a doubt comes to our mind but here limit extending to infinity of x e power minus x is 0 not only this limit extending to infinity of x square e power minus x is also 0 not only this limit extending to infinity of x to the power of n into e power minus x is 0 where, where n is a finite positive integer this is the very interesting aspect of the exponential function that help in determining the value of the gamma function for different values to the argument the value of the gamma function when n is equal to 2 let us start with gamma 2 that means we are substituting 2 for n in the appropriate integral so gamma 2 is integral 0 to infinity e power minus x into x dx we can evaluate this integral by using general rule for integration by part we get x into minus of e power minus x with a negative sign derivative of x into 
the other integral becomes e power minus x these quantities are to be evaluated at 0 and infinity at infinity both these quantities become zero at zero the first quantity becomes zero because x multiplies the second quantity becomes one we have to write the value at the lower limit with a negative sign so finally we are going to get one that means gamma 2 is also one can we go for gamma 3 gamma 3 means integral 0 to infinity or gamma 3 is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x square dx taking x square as the first function e power minus x as the second function we can use the general rule for integration by point to get x square into minus e power minus x with a negative sign 2x into e power minus x with a plus sign 2 into minus e power minus x these are to be evaluated at 0 and infinity at the upper limit all these three quantities become zero at the lower limit the first two quantities become zero the third one takes the value two so finally we are going to get a two as the value of the function that means gamma 3 is equal to two in fact gamma 3 is factorial 2. Let us now learn one recurrence relation for gamma function. The recurrence relation states that gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n gamma n. I repeat once again gamma n plus 1 is equal to n gamma n. How are we going to get it? We start with the definition for gamma n plus 1. That means integral 0 to infinity e power minus x into x to the power of n dx. This integral we rewrite as integral u dv or we write it in the form integral u dv taking u as x to the power of n and v as minus e power minus x. You can write the integral for gamma n plus 1 as integral 0 to infinity x to the power of n into d of minus e power minus x. Now the integral is of the form integral u dv. By integration by part you can write it as uv minus integral v du. Therefore you can write it as x to the power of n into minus e power minus x that is uv. Then with a negative sign integral of minus e power minus x into derivative of x to the power of n that means nx to the power of n minus 1 dx. The first quantity evaluated at both the limits becomes zero because we have seen earlier that x to the power of n e power minus x tends to zero as x tends to infinity for any finite positive integral value of n and also x is equal to zero makes it zero so at both the limits the first quantity becomes zero in the second integral n can be taken out the integral can be observed as integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power of n minus 1 dx or same as gamma n. So we get in the right hand side n into gamma n or we got the relation gamma n plus 1 is equal to n gamma n. This is a very important relation. This helps in many contexts. Let us see how. Initially, the definition of the gamma function is for only positive values of n. This recurrence relation in a rewritten form helps us in knowing values of the gamma function for negative values of n also. Now let us see what are the uses. For example, we go for gamma 2 that means take n is equal to 1. That means in the recurrence relation let us take n is equal to 1. Left hand side is gamma 2. It is gamma of 1 plus 1. It is the form gamma n plus 1. So it can be written as 1 gamma 1 or 1 into 1 or 1 only. Suppose we substitute n is equal to 2. That means we start with gamma 3. It is same as gamma of 2 plus 1. So you can write it as 2 gamma 2 or 2 into 1 or factorial 2. Suppose we substitute n is equal to 3. That is gamma 4 we are considering. 
it is gamma of 3 plus 1 or 3 gamma 3 or 3 into factorial 2 is equal to factorial 3. Suppose we consider gamma n plus 1. If n is a positive integer, just by guesswork we can say that it is factorial n. So gamma n plus 1 is factorial n for positive integral values of n. Naturally we will have a question. We didn't specify that n is an integer or n is a real quantity. Can we have values of the gamma function for fractional values of n? Yes, we can easily determine the value of the gamma function for n is equal to 1 by 2. So let us now discuss the problem of finding gamma n for n is equal to 1 by 2 or determining the gamma function about determination of gamma half. For this, we require an alternative definition of the gamma function. What is the alternative definition? Gamma n is equal to, that means gamma n can also be written as 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square x to the power of 2n minus 1 dx for n greater than 0. How do we get this alternative definition? We get this from the original definition by using the substitution x is equal to y square. That means we start with gamma n is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power of n minus 1 dx put x is equal to y square so dx becomes 2y dy when x is 0 y is 0 as x tends to infinity y tends to infinity the earlier integral becomes integral 0 to infinity e power minus y square y to the power of 2n minus 2 into 2y dy. Taking out 2 and then writing y terms say as a single term we get 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus y square y to the power of 2n minus 1 dy. This is a definite integral. In a definite integral variable of integration is known as a dummy argument. So whether we write x or some other symbol without any loss of generality, it will be valid. Or you can write gamma n is equal to 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square x to the power of 2n minus 1 dx. Because that, that means to have replaced y by x. Now we are going to utilize this alternative definition for determination of gamma half. What is the procedure we adopt? Initially, we start with gamma half. That means take this alternative definition, substitute n is equal to 1 by 2. We get it. gamma half is equal to 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square dx. Then we consider gamma half whole square. One integral we write as 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square dx. Another gamma half we write as 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus y square dy. That means when we consider gamma half whole square, it is 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus x square dx into 2 times integral 0 to infinity e power minus y square dy. This is a product of two single integrals. Whenever the limits for the variables are constant, such a product can be written as a double integral. Therefore, it can be written as 4 times integral x is equal to 0 to infinity, integral y is equal to 0 to infinity, e power minus x square, e power minus y square, dy dx, dy dx. Or you can further write it as 4 times integral x is equal to 0 to infinity, integral y is equal to 0 to infinity, e power minus of x square plus y square, dx dy or dy dx. 